Hello. Hi. Well, how are you? We are leaving our Airbnb. Actually, we just left it. We're at the gas station. Yes, filled up on petrol. Petrol. <laughs> gas anyway we just checked out of our airbnb in dingle and we had so much fun it was such a great little visit i'm glad we chose this town to kind of hunker down and explore the southwestern part of ireland it's been a really great five nights Did yeah you say five nights five nights and i think for being such a small town there is a lot to do there is we yeah we did a lot of, we tried a lot we saw a lot it was a great experience but today we're moving north. We're driving to the Cliffs of Moher, or Mohair, as like a lot of Americans <laughs> like to call it. But we've been told it's pronounced closer to Moher. I'm just probably still not getting that right. Um, we're, so we're driving up to the Cliffs, seeing those, and then we're going to drive a little bit further north, I believe, to Ga Galway. Galway. I've been We've been corrected. corrected. I said Galway, and they kept everybody keeps correcting me. They're like, no, 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 it's Galway. <laughs> but anyway, we're driving. It's going to be a lot of driving today, but we're going to take a ferry, and the weather is pretty nice. It's like sunny rain showers right now, so... We'll see, but let's get going. There's a couple of ways to get to the Cliffs of Moher from Dingle. All routes are about three hours, so we decided to take the more scenic route. And it included a ferry. about this little tiny back road. Keep your eyes on the road, don't look at the camera. <laughs> I'm feeling great about this little tiny back road, except if a car is coming the opposite direction, then I probably won't be feeling the same way. It's a little bit narrow, a little bit bumpy. I don't know if Google Maps is just playing a joke on us. We are at the cliffs of Moor? Moor? Mower? Moor. Mohair? Every time I look at it, I think it says Cliffs of Mother, but there's no T in it, so. But it is the Cliffs of Moor. We're here, and we haven't seen them yet. You have to pay, it was eight euros per adult. And pulling up here, we definitely know where all the tourists are, so. this we found is, them. Yeah, we did find them, so. But we're excited to see this. I'm so excited. The Cliffs of Insanity, as oh, I grew up yes. knowing them. <laughs> the Cliffs of Insanity. And just for you to know, the wind out here is pretty crazy. Like the car is shaking. I mean, it's been windy the whole time, but this is something else today. Yeah, so from here on out, we may have to put subtitles because, yeah, I just think I know how this is going to go. But bear with us. It's going to be worth it. All right, let's go. flying around a little bit and then they're like living on the side of the cliff those are puffins so they're kind of hard to see they don't come up right to the sidewalk but if you will if you can see them flying so bring binoculars if you have them now it's raining on us huh sarah a little bit <laughs> get to experience all sorts of weather here so when you arrive, you park in the lot. If you're in a car, you park in the lot across the street. If you're in a bus, you park right next to the visitor center. The visitor center is the first thing you come to. And then there's a couple different lookout points and we're gonna hit all of them today. And each one has a little bit different of a view. So it is worth, if you're able to, it's worth walking to each of the different viewpoints.
just finished with the cliffs of Moore. Moore. Moher. <laughs> Moore. <laughs> Whatever. We're just trying to cover our bases so people don't say, no, it's not pronounced like that. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> but they are spectacular. They are. They're truly the cliffs of insanity. Like, if you don't know, The Princess Bride is actually filmed partially at the Cliffs of Moher. It's the part where they're climbing up the cliffs and they call it the Cliffs of Insanity. Like, they're really incredible. Yeah. And Chris really wanted to fly his drone here, but it is a no drone zone, which we knew going yeah. into it. So don't fly your drone. It's been a no drone zone for years now. Don't. Oh, man. Some epic shots would be had here. And it's very <laughs> windy. So even if we were allowed to fly it, yeah. we wouldn't have been able to today. But because we weren't able to get really epic shots of like what they really look like all the way from like the ocean all the way up to the top, we'll put a clip in here. Look, it's right on top of us. I wonder if he's using the same wind we are using. Whoever he is, he's too late. See? The Cliffs of Insanity! I think we originally, when we learned about the Cliffs of Moher, we thought it was going to be a whole day experience because we had seen other people on YouTube and stuff turn it into a whole day experience. And while they really are incredible, it's not a full day. In fact, I think it's probably more like an hour and a half, and you're good to go. You Would could you? Well, you could probably spend a half day out here and stretch stretch it. Maybe find some little hikes in the area or walk further along the cliffs. Yeah. We didn't walk the whole length of it, um, but I don't think it's a full day activity. No, and granted, there are a lot of people here right now, mm -hmm. but we're not during the summer season, and I would imagine in the summer season it probably picks up quite a bit. Probably. It, I mean, the parking lot's mostly full around us right now. It's it's busy. It's definitely the busiest we've seen it, like the most tourists. Um, but that being said, it's not the worst. It's very manageable mm -hmm. still. Yeah. There's plenty of room for people to enjoy the different viewpoints and that kind of thing. Like we definitely found spaces to get our picture in front of the cliffs and that kind of thing. But you are going to be battling a few more crowds than you would in maybe a smaller town like Dingle where we've been. I will say that they had a very nice visitor center. Yeah, they really did. Those yeah. are worth checking out. Whenever you visit, like we visit national parks and stuff, we love stopping at the visitor center. I, I think I used to think they were for the, for the older people. <laughs> but they're really fascinating. You learn a lot about like the history of the area and the wildlife in the area and really sort of how they're formed and that yeah. kind of thing. It's just, it's really fascinating. So stop through it. It's a good one. Yeah, they had like carved into the mountain, which it looks really cool. And they did a really nice job on the exhibits. I don't think it was actually carved into the mountain. No. Well, it looked like it was carved into the mountain. No. All right. So. So would you say it's worth coming out here? Mm. I, I think it's definitely worth coming out here. If you're coming here and you only have a certain amount of days, definitely see it because it's spectacular. I don't think you need to stay the entire day out here. Mm -hmm. um, but with that said, yeah, I do think it's worth it and definitely come see it. Yeah, spend some time walking around. It's pretty accessible no matter your physical fitness level. If you're not quite able to walk as far, do know that you're going to be a little more limited to what viewpoints you can view. While there are like sidewalks and stairs getting up to the other viewpoints, they're pretty hilly to get up to them. So mm -hmm. if, that's, if you're not able to, you will be more limited, but you can still see really great views. And can we talk about the electric fence against the... Yeah, on one part of it, the farmer who owns the pasture next to it has a sign, it's like electric fence, don't touch, and you're like climbing <laughs> over this little stairway to like continue up the path, and I guess if you would touch the fence, it's electric and it would have shocked you. I guess he's had one too many tourists chase a sheep in his pasture, that's the best I can figure out, so I mean, yeah, props like, to him, I guess. So it does get a little tight there, but other than that, it Still was Still accessible, yeah. definitely worth the trip. I would come back, or I would highly recommend coming here. But maybe if you're going to make the Cliffs of Moher an entire day, stop at some other places along the way. We'll list some other places to visit in the area of Cliffs of Moher in the blog post, which will link down below if you're interested in spending a whole day in the area. But definitely check it out. All right. So we actually packed, or we had somebody in Dingle pack us a lunch, the cheese shop. Yeah, we went to a little cheese shop yesterday <laughs> and we told her that we wanted to do a picnic today and they actually pack baskets for you. they pack little picnics for you if you're interested and so we told the girl we were like we like cheese pack us a picnic and she did so we let her pick 
Um, she picked three different cheeses for us, different varieties. We got some crackers and some pickled onions and tomatoes. And um, so now we have our lunch for our long drive tomorrow to the cliffs more. So we kind of, it's gonna be a long day of driving for us and we didn't want to have to stop for lunch. So now we have it and it's all local and yeah, dairy's huge in Ireland. And so this is like good cheese and it was the cutest little shop and such a fun experience. So highly recommend if you're here. We're gonna have a little picnic in the car. We're gonna grab some coffee at the little shop down the street. If they're still open, they were open on the way in. And then we're gonna drive to Galway. All right, let's go. Hello. Hi. Well, how are you? Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Come here. No, we don't do that actually. Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Hello. Mama's staring you down up there on the hill. Look at her. Hello. 